A bold act of retaliation by Russia today, now shutting down the U.S. consulate in St. Petersburg, Russia, and giving 60 U.S. State Department employees working in Russia one week to get out. That is exactly the same number of Russians kicked out of the U.S. last week. This in response to the poisoning with a nerve agent of a former Russian spy on British soil. General James Clapper joins me now. He's a CNN national security analyst and former director of national intelligence under President Obama. General, thanks very much for taking the time. Uh, so we're in the midst of a tit for tat here right. uh, between the two. Does it, does it go further than this, do you think? Uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that's as far as I'll go. I, I, uh, I, will, I will say, though, I couldn't help but think back on last uh, December 29th, mm -hmm. uh, 2016, when we expelled 35 uh, Russian spies and the Russians didn't do anything. And uh, just interesting ah. historical contrast. Meaning that at the time, I mean, the, the implication at the time was that they got a signal from the Trump well, administration. Well, obviously they did, yes. Uh -huh. I, I was just thinking back on that. Interesting point. We will keep that in mind. I, I understand you just returned from the UK. What was the British response to this American step? Did, did, did they see a tougher Trump administration on Russia now? Did they see? Do they see the Trump administration getting tougher on well, Russia? Well, uh, belatedly, I think uh, they were, uh, and, and I say they, these were former seniors in the uh, UK intelligence services. And I think they're gratified that we finally we took this uh, uh, stand. Uh, I mean, they view us as their, cl our close, their closest allies, and uh, I think the delay was a little disconcerting to them, but uh, the fact we took pretty resolute action uh, and expelled 60 was went over very well there. Mm -hmm. uh, whether <clears throat> that actually is, is uh, enough to really change the behavior of the Russians, particularly with, with this aggressive information operations warfare campaign they're waging against us, no. But I think it was the, certainly the appropriate thing to do in response to really egregious things the Russians did in, in the UK. Right. Um, on, on the Russia investigation here, I'm sure you're aware the New York Times is reporting that Trump's lawyer floated the idea of pardons for both Michael Flynn, <clears throat> who of course pled guilty to lying to the FBI, and Paul Manafort, former Trump campaign manager who faces a whole host of criminal charges. In your view, is that appropriate? Well, I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know, uh, again, from a legal standpoint, to the extent to which merely, if there was such a conversation, what, to the, what extent that represents potential obstruction of right. justice. So. I wouldn't think it's appropriate, no. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, and we know that the special counsel is looking at least at the possibility of obstruction uh, of justice. Uh, also on the investigation, emails obtained by CNN show that the Justice Department, if the president were to, imagine this, tweet a pardon out, which, you know, his own Justice Department was preparing right. for that very, po very possibility, it concluded that it would really have no involvement. In that, can you see a scenario where well, that would be legally viable? I mean, would, would amount to a presidential well, decision? I, I think uh, legally, the mm -hmm. uh, president can pardon just about anybody he wants right. to. So that's certainly uh, the case. Uh, you know, President Obama pardoned some people, and uh, there wasn't a lot of staffing uh, done uh, at, at, at the end of his administration. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's within the president's prerogative. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he did it by a tweet. <clears throat> It'd be very unusual, but that's characteristic. Final question here. We, we learned from court documents filed this week by the special counsel that Rick Gates, uh, Trump's former deputy <clears throat> campaign chairman, was working with a former Russian intelligence agent, uh, someone that he knew was a former Russian intelligence agent, and told other witnesses in there. You and I have talked over the past several months uh, about these contacts between the Trump campaign. Would that be, I don't know if appropriate is the word, but would it, would it be right for someone working on a presidential campaign in the U.S. to speak to someone he knows is a former Russian intel agent? Well, I read an article today that somebody characterized this contact as, as the winch, as in the witch hunt that uh, the president's been claiming. I, I don't know because just as some of the contacts we saw uh, in the last administration, I don't know the content of the conversation, but certainly uh, as an intelligence guy, it kind of raises my, uh, you know, dashboard warning light when you're any time uh, a Russian uh, intelligence agent, whether past or present, they never really retire, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, is in contact with uh, someone in the United States. And that, that kind of, you know, raises a yellow flag. General James Clapper, thanks very much. Thanks, Jim.